Tell me lecture facts, go. Let's think about it. So we have these things called kidneys. They filter stuff. What do they filter? I don't know, I haven't finished it. <laughs> hey, hello guys, welcome to week 10 of my vlog. I have Mrs. Riskigno. Did Rizigno. I pronounce that right? Riskigno, you're close. That's the first one wrong, okay. Right, go ahead and introduce yourself really quick. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Riskigno. I am a first year medical student here at UNR Med. I don't know what else is important, but that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so okay. for those who want to know your background, so you can talk in kind of about your journey, what did you do exactly, what did you have to go through, things you were interested in, that sort of deal. So my journey actually started in high school. I realized I really liked the medical field, because just, you know, I, I had done a project actually in middle school, but I got to see an ER, and I thought that was really cool. It was like a career okay. shadowing day or something. Yeah. That was really cool for me. So in high school I said, you know, I really liked the medical field, but honestly, I didn't know that much about it. You know, I had been to doctor, but really didn't know much about it. So what I did my junior year ish, yes. ish <laughs> between I think sophomore and junior year, whatever, um, I started volunteering at a hospital. Yeah. So here in Reno, we have Renown Regional yeah. Medical Center. So I started volunteering there. When I was like 16, they had a special program for high schools. So that was really cool mm -hmm. that I got to see kind of patient encounters, but I also got to know how a hospital worked. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so that was really important to me is to see the dynamic and see where I wanted to be put in the dynamic and where, where, where yeah, pretty much where I wanted to be. So then when I was, once again a junior, um, I did a shadowing or an internship as part of a class. Mm -hmm. So I chose to do it at Renown and see what the hospital was like because originally I thought maybe I wanted to be a nurse. So I went there, I shadowed a lot of nurses, I rounded on patients, worked with everybody and realized, you know, I don't think nursing is what I want to do. I really like their interaction. They have a lot of interaction. And so if you're interested in that and you want a really flexible schedule, that is a great career. But it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. I realized I wanted to manage patient care from just a little bit more than nurses did. Then um, I shadowed some doctors, realized I really liked that. And then I applied to the BSMD program and I was accepted, which was shocking, <laughs> honestly. I was very surprised. I mean, from what I've been told from most of the people who actually do have the BSMD, so you essentially, you sign some form of a contract, I'm sure. The first week of school, you sign a yeah. contract. That's a nerve-wracking contract. Yeah, and the thing is, is that, so they're hold to, to higher standards, like it's very strict requirements to get in. They have a specific amount of classes that they have to go ahead and take. With them signing that contract before that, they're basically saying, you are going to get into medical school, you better do it, right? Because because of that contract yeah. binding there, and it puts a lot more pressure on them. Yes, they do get the, the like I say, like I said, the golden ticket into medical school, but it's it's a lot more pressure that they have to go ahead and deal with. I was in the accelerated program. It's no longer actually accelerated here. It's now an eight-year program instead of a seven-year program. So in seven years, genius. I mentor. I actually am a mentor to the younger BSNBs, so oh. I spend a lot of time with them. Right. It's, it's really good because I get to, you know, they panic about things that I definitely panicked about that were not worth panicking about. You might be panicking about something, it's probably not worth it in the long run. You will learn that later. <laughs> Back to my history of medical stuff. I volunteered all throughout col uh, college, just one day a week. I kept it in renowned Children's Hospital, which is where I was before. So that was kind of everything. I don't know. And then I applied to medical school. And that's a good background to have is like I can see even with my interactions with like the first 10 weeks for you. I, when I see her, I definitely do feel like there's there's a sense of authentic passion and she's probably smiling as she looks at me now because she enjoys the field so much. And I can see that through her. And one of the things I wish for, for you guys if you're interested in medicine is that I see that same exact love and, and smiling and joy resonating through you guys as well because you enjoy the thing, you, not the thing, you enjoy the profession so much. Um, and I'm honestly like, I'm glad to see that in Megan, it's awesome. Thank you. And that's there's so always going to be parts of medicine that you don't like. And that's important too, is, you know, mm -hmm. just because you don't like one thing doesn't mean you'll like something, or doesn't mean you won't like something else. So for instance, there's, there's fields that I find way more interesting than others. And that's mm -hmm. completely normal. And you know, that's mm -hmm. honestly important because you have to eventually narrow down things. Yeah. So. Nice background. Yeah. She's way better than me, obviously. <laughs> 
She just says, get out of here. <laughs> I don't even believe you. All right, so in particular, I chose Megan because she was actually very eager to go ahead and join me on this specific episode. Of and course. I'm really glad she did because week 10 is that blur after me when we had this huge break period actually from I think week nine. I was totally out of it, I'm not gonna lie. My study schedule and everything was a bit off just because it was such a relaxed week. She's not in your head because I'm not lying. No, okay? I, it was it was weird. <laughs> we had a week of stats and it didn't require that much work. No. I feel bad for saying that, but it didn't and so the study schedule went down the drain. As far as the overview goes, what we did is it was an intro to cardio week. Once again, it was hard to go ahead and transition into that because of the break period, but coming from me now, I mean, we are in week 15. We actually just finished it up. We got our exam coming in two weeks. That was a crucial week to go ahead and pay attention to. It was probably our easiest, this, I mean, this week 10 was probably our easiest week, but I wish I would have paid attention a little bit more. What did you think about week 10 overall? Honestly, I didn't go to that many classes in week 10, but I wish I had, well, actually, it, wor it worked out pretty well. It was a really long week. We had classes, but we had, you know, like one lecturer in particular who pretty much lectured the entire week. So it was just, it was a long, long week, and especially because we transitioned from that stats week, which was relatively easy, it was a hard transition. From then on, just like everything else in medical school, every day builds on itself. Mm -hmm. So if you don't keep up, <laughs> That can be really hard. I keep up all the time. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> all right, so as me and Megan had already mentioned, it was intro to cardio week. And essentially what this entailed was, I think at the very beginning, we actually learned, I think it was anatomy of the heart. And throughout the rest of the week was actually that she was talking about, it was this one specific lecture that was responsible for talking about like conductance of the heart, electrophysiology of it. That was mm -hmm. probably like the hardest one and that was the last one we had before that weekend. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to call it chemicals. All oh, those things just like ion in gradients process. and yeah. stuff. It's just electrical conduction for the mm -hmm. most part and everything that comes with it. So yeah, can you talk about the lectures for those week. All right, so what, did, what exactly did we go over? Not to put any pressure on you. What exactly <laughs> did we go over? Oh my goodness. We first went over anatomy of the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need to know the anatomy cart. We actually also did an ultrasound kind of thing that week, so we really got to see, oh, yeah. yeah, we got to see, we yeah. got to see kind of how everything works in real time, which was really different, and I had actually, I had never used an ultrasound no, for yeah, that, so that was really cool. Um, as far as conduction goes, we talked about you know, how the current, it starts at the SA node, it's like a pacemaker cell is what it's called. It works its way across to the other side of the heart. And we're talking about the, uh, the right atria here. And then it goes down to the AV node, which is kind of in the center of the heart, between the quadrants, kind of, sort of. Um, and then it goes down into the ventricles. Hopefully you guys There's are There's a lot of details to this. Yeah. There's a lot of detail. So it goes there and that's the depolarization, that it repolarizes from the outside in, and that's how you get your heart See, she's, to beat. She's, she's smart, obviously. She remembers all these specific stuff. I spent so much time on all this, I better know uh, by now. <laughs> for anybody who isn't engaging in anatomy yet, so like you, she threw out terms out there like right ventricle, right atrium, and all stuff, you mm -hmm. guys are probably doing like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Megan, right? <laughs> what it essentially comes down to is our heart is the main pump of the system. They kept exaggerating that actually throughout the block. If there are things going wrong with the heart, that is the main pump of essential nutrients for your entire body. Lectures themselves were very relevant as far as the entire physiology of the body goes. And the thing I liked about it with the intro to cardio week, and like you can correct me if I'm wrong, is we're finally figuring out like it's kind of like the, the gateway into all of the other physiology that we're even learning right now. So like we're in renal, but we're still seeing stuff from the week 10 as a matter of fact. The heart impacts the blood flow to the entire body, right? Mm -hmm. But there's so many processes in other parts of the body that affect the heart. So in kidneys, we're seeing like, it's like hypokalemia, which is mm -hmm. um, increased uh, potassium in your body. Okay, that can, that impacts your kidneys, that impacts your heart, everything's connected and it's really cool to see that, I think. And kind of, you're, it's piecing things together and it's, it's really cool. <laughs> I think when I took undergrad anatomy, I wasn't super excited about anatomy. Yes, yes, Honestly, I agree. I just couldn't get into it and I, I had a hard time. I was just, I got bored. <laughs> I didn't put the time in, I think, to really study the material and that made it really hard for it to be engaging. Now, we have to study the material hard, really, or else you're never gonna, 
and that makes it very hard to get the rest of the material, I think. I think now that I'm learning it in depth and really trying to connect things, that makes it so much more engaging. Palm. Palm. Do we actually have like our palm observed history and physical? So it's like the exam of the practice of medicine. And we have that next week and we have to go over all of this stuff. And in week 10, I was telling her I was having a hard time remembering. But Megan here is very good at remembering this stuff. I so just went over it the last time. I'm gonna half, be so. I'm gonna be your demonstration <laughs> as far as what we learned today or this week I should say in Palm. Okay. Okay. Anyway. What we did today mm -hmm. is we did head, neck. I don't know if throat's considered it's like head, neck. Head, and neck. Yeah. yeah. I guess like yeah. throat is the same thing as neck. So I don't even know why I just said that. And we also did abdominal. So you wouldn't think it's that much. But that week was really intense. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go through a practice of what all that is and what maneuvers you do to do that. <laughs> yeah. She's looking at me with an evil look right now. Okay, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the lymph nodes. Not really look, but we're gonna feel for them. So we're gonna feel underneath. This is our jaw, right? So we're gonna feel right underneath here. And then we have a muscle here that's our sternocleidomastoid. It's right. We're gonna go on both sides of that. And then we're also gonna go underneath our clavicle and our clavicle runs right here, otherwise known as your collarbone. We're gonna go right above it actually. And you can kind of have people do some maneuvers so you can feel in there. So we're gonna feel right here. Okay, and I'm gonna feel down. I've down never had anybody side. teach my audience before. This is great for you guys. I don't feel any bumps there, so that's normal. If you feel any bumps, you could, we haven't gotten to pathology, so I couldn't tell you what it is, but it's, uh, it's abnormal. And then I'm gonna go right here. I'm right above this clavicle. I'm touching it with the bottom of my fingers, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of just feeling along it. If you can't feel it, you can have a person kind of scrunch their shoulders in just like that, and you get a little bit deeper. For those of you who are curious to know like what she's doing, well, why exactly are you doing like those specific spots? Like, What are you mm -hmm. feeling for? I'm feeling yeah. for lymph nodes. So those are spots that lymph nodes are. Um, That's oh, all yeah. we have to know for that one. So yeah. that one's kind of nice. So, wait, so what she's doing there, guys, is essentially when I was talking about like the lymph nodes and stuff. So when she's feeling around for those specific areas, well, for those of you taking biology, you guys may be aware of like the immune system and the lymph node is one of those essential components to there. A lymph node actually is a like a huge multicellular process that you actually can feel. If you can feel it pretty prominently, especially as a first year medical student, that's like, whoa, like something is definitely wrong, Probably, right? Probably, yeah, that's normal. Yeah, and if those are inflamed, that basically means your immune system is like, it's, it's game on. So when she feels mm -hmm. around, if I feel if there's anything there, it's probably indicating I have some kind of infection. <laughs> so for head and neck, head, it's H-E-E-N-T is what's acronymed, and it's head, ears, eyes, nose, nose and throat. throat. Yeah. So for the other ones, what you do is you shine a light in somebody's eye, and you're looking to see what their eye ac uh, accommodates. Their pupil, the black part, should go, should go smaller, okay? And then you bring the light away, and you do it again, and you look at the other eye, the opposite eye, and you see if that one accommodates, otherwise known as the pupil where the black part <laughs> kind of shrinks. After that, you do an ear exam. And by that, I mean you just look in their ear, you see the tympanic membrane, which is just like a... Uh, it's like, like a fuzzy white reflection. Yeah, you look through. yeah. If you don't yeah. know what it is, Google it. It's yeah. kind of cool. Actually, you know what's even more fun? Google abnormal ones. That was more fun. <laughs> That's what you're looking for in the ear. After that, you look in the, in the nose, and you're looking to see that there's actually like a little gap in your nose. I learned this today. I didn't know what we were looking for before, but I do now. I didn't know this Right? Either. Okay, thank you for your medical students. And if somebody's doing like a lot of cocaine, the area is smaller, they actually touch. So, interesting, didn't know it. But when you're looking for it, you'll see it. After that you do, you have them open up their mouth, you know, traditional, uh, exactly. After that, then you transition to abdominal. The abdomen exam, and I can't do it, that'd probably be better for like a separate video itself, but it's, we do this thing called auscultation, and the way I like to think about it is when, when you're auscultating, you're basically hearing for stuff, so. She actually has her handy dandy stethoscope here. Like during week one, you know, we're doing the things where it's like I'm listening to heart sounds and stuff. We call that auscultation. Right. And what we're doing there is for this week, we're actually listening for the abdominal area. And what you want to do is like they just said, just make sure that there's this normal bowel movement. So like it's the regular gurgles and stuff that you're hearing when you're processing food. If that's not there, something's wrong. <laughs> as simple as that. And then the second part too was palpitation is when like you're feeling around. So I would ask her like to lay down and then it kind of just feeling around in every single spot just to make sure like nothing's hurting. You go like and softer to deeper. Yes. And yeah. then with that, a lot of times you're looking at the person's face. They're like wincing. <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> 
so that that was basically the outline of, of what we did that week for Palm. And the reason I think we had a bit of a difficulty with this week is because there was a lot more more of a specific maneuver with it. There's definitely a lot more maneuvers in this one than we've previously had. I forgot about the thyroid. You checked the thyroid gland too. That's As you can see, it's difficult, guys. It, they're, they're <laughs> just like, it's easy to forget things and it takes a lot of practice to make sure you have the right flow for things. Mostly, it's just so many maneuvers that you just gotta, you gotta keep your order. And if you don't, that sucks. Screwed. That sucks, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> no you can always come back to it later since you're good. Ooh, I have a funny story for the one I learned in Ultrasound. I watched Grey's oh, Anatomy and they did okay. it wrong. Oh, we gotta hear about this. So, we did an ultrasound thing. Our second and fourth years, a couple of each, come in and help us and show us exactly where we were supposed to be putting the, what do you call it? The thing that you move, the thing you move to see the ultrasound. Yeah, it's a device that they, they, they put on your skin specifically to send out the, I guess, like the communicating what do you call it, rays or... I really don't know how um, ultrasounds work. They work because they work. That's we're not, doing such it's injustice, not part of our guys. curriculum. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll probably put it in the notes somewhere later on. So, what I found really useful, so we did all this, you know, you get to see the heart valves actually closing and opening and how the heart's pumping, and that's really cool to see, especially because this was when we were first going over the anatomy of the heart and how conduction works. What I found really funny is I was watching Grey's Anatomy later that week. Thursday nights, TGIT, and um, <laughs> really interesting was on Grey's Anatomy that night they happened to do be doing a cardiac ultrasound, and it was the same exact thing that we had seen, except and this is a big except. This is why Grey's Anatomy is not super accurate. Although Chandra, you're great, you know, if you ever watch this video, <laughs> um, their thingy jig that we can't remember the name of, where you put it typically right here or, you know, depending. Mm -hmm. And they had it over top of the heart. And we're seeing a view that was like... Completely not I think it, it was like sub xiphoid view, mm -hmm. but it was, they had it in the wrong spot. You are a liar, a deceiver. I'll never fall for your tricks again. Never! <laughs> and I was like, wow. I have learned something in medical school. This is a medical that school that's for you guys. That was that moment where I, was, where, where I said to myself, <laughs> I actually learned something. <laughs> so in this week guys we also had another anatomy lab and one of the things i want to point out in particular and this just shows how much of a dummy i can be sometimes again and maybe it's different for our medical school i'm not really sure i did not know that the anatomy lab was going to be split within the blocks themselves. So at the end of block one, we had our first anatomy lab, and then I believe, I mean, this was now our second anatomy lab. Mm -hmm. And what I was thinking is that every single week there'd be an anatomy lab, because that's the, the, the kind of the, the toughness that I had surrounded around medical school when I came in. It was like, there's gonna be an anatomy lab that we gotta learn, all of these structures and stuff that we gotta learn like every single week. But we have anatomy labs every like two or three weeks or something like that. As a matter of fact, we haven't had an anatomy lab, I think, since since the one we're talking about right now, as no, a matter of fact. No, we have one next week, I think. Yes, yeah, but yeah. The, yeah, we've had a gap the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, what we learned about specifically with this one was to make sure that we, we follow along, along specifically with what we're learning that week and, you know, mm -hmm. it being intro to cardio, so you guys can guess, right? We examined heart structure. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and, and pulled out those hearts out of the cadavers and it was cool just like getting that sense of feeling that you know we're working on a real human being and that that compassion kind of hit me again personally. I didn't have the lectures caught up when I was doing anatomy specifically because I don't go to, to the movie, <laughs> I only do the recorded lectures and stuff. But I mean my team made huge contribution. Shout out to you know who you are, the really smart one in my group because she always catches us more in the anatomy lab. But to go on to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the second anatomy lab. What were your feelings walking into there? Like what did you learn? What did you think about it? So I had taken anatomy before. I took an undergrad and I actually taught anatomy um, lab. Another one. At, Another Minoj here. I did it with Minoj. I was in the same class as Minoj. I had done cadaver dissections with Minoj, actually. Hmm. So that was a really good experience. And this time it was more purposeful, I would say. And not everybody has yeah. that experience. So everybody's kind of at different, different spots, I guess. But as far as anatomy lab goes, you know, you get used to it. If, if you are scared of cadavers, or just don't want to go near them, you get used to it. I mean, desensitized. You get desensitized. Like. Yeah, I like to use that word a lot. And that might seem 
impersonal, but it is what it is, and that's sometimes how you have to to treat the situation, I guess, because in the grand scheme of things, how I like to think about it is that this person donated their body to us and they yeah. for us to learn. So they are they are teaching us, and that's really a cool way of thinking about it. I don't know. That's an interesting perspective, that's actually. Happened, like, I, like, I really like that. Yeah. This week we had what we called a scholarly concentration. And while I was not able to attend that, Megan here actually is gonna go and speak about that since she did it. So pretty much with the scholarly concentration, this was more of a what you can do in medical school, one of your options for specializing your path. You can do like five different options as far as specializations. Specifically with the scholarly concentrations, the purpose, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that it gears you more towards focusing where you want to go ahead and apply for residency and that can ultimately help you get there, but I'm sure there are more reasons. There definitely are, yeah. So, for instance, if you want to do, if you like traveling and you like helping other people, which most med medical students are relatively altruistic as far as they like helping people. Mm -hmm. So, global health is a great way to keep learning and keep practicing your clinical skills, but also help people who are impoverished. Uh, especially in developing countries, which is typically where people go. It's a great opportunity if they go for a couple of weeks. Medical education, if you see something wrong or something that you want to fix in our medical education, which is just everyday classes and everything, if you see something that should be better, you can fix it. And you can do a project that's that, that completely surrounds helping younger classes improve the curriculum. And that's really cool. And so there's there's all sorts of ones. Ethics, you go to... You do a lot of ethical, you do cases, case studies, and then you actually go and sit on the board of ethics for Renown and St. Mary's, which are the two local hospitals. So that's really cool, really different. They're all different, but it's what you're interested in. And it's just another way to get involved, I guess, more than anything. I think it's involvement and getting experience in things that you normally wouldn't as a medical student. I'm gonna ask you one question, okay? Okay. Okay. Pick a number, one or two. Okay, two. Or is one better? Everybody picks this one, guys. Everybody. Sorry, one. I like this one, actually. Okay. Okay, okay so Megan, for those interested in coming into medicine, what is your single most crucial advice or tip you would give to them? I think my single most precious advice is to go shadow, to go get experience in the field, because you don't necessarily know if you you know, you could like something, but getting experience, you see a whole different side of things. And I think getting getting experience for me really narrowed down what I wanted to do. Not necessarily as a specialty, but it determined that a physician is what I wanted to be a physician. So getting that experience, getting that shadowing, whatever it takes, whether you're working in the healthcare field or you're just a volunteer, which is what I was, or an intern, it's a great way to see what, what's out there. And you know, you make connections, you can get letter of recommendation. That's where I got all of my letters of recommendation so far is mm -hmm. Renown. Thanks, Renown. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you really, you really get to know people and you get to know patients and you get, you're so much more comfortable in front of patients because you've worked with patients already. So I'm really comfortable with kids. I know what works. I know how not to make a kid scream. <laughs> That's um, a good gift. It's a good, yeah, yeah. It's distractions. <laughs> and you, you just, you learn. And I think learning and getting that experience is, is the most, I think it's the best thing you can do for yourself. So that wraps up week 10. I hope you guys enjoyed the content that was specifically in week 10 that Megan went ahead and shared with you guys. If you want to go ahead and know a little <laughs> bit more about her, feel free to go ahead and shoot questions her way mm -hmm. by contacting me and that I can get you in contact with her potentially if that's okay with yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm more than happy, especially people who you know don't have a traditional pathway into medicine or you know their parents were in medicine and neither of my parents were in medicine. I kind of had no idea what I was getting myself into. So feel free to ask me any questions about anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that's it. If you guys like the content of this video, go ahead and like this video. Watch my other videos as well. And then go ahead and subscribe to the channel to go ahead and await some more upcoming news, upcoming vlogs. I got some exciting stuff going on. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye everyone. Bye. Wait. I was going <laughs> to do this. Creer en amor. Creer en amor.